Hello. Okay, welcome to Raja Group Chemistry uh, video one. So we are going to look at the fundamentals today. Okay, the fundamentals of chemistry. What are the things that we have to know uh, initially? Okay. So I'm going to explain to you some of the important concepts that we are going to look at today. Uh, there is several things that we, before we start chemistry, we have to know about the fundamental concepts such as such as elements, compounds, and what is in the periodic table, and many things. So first, we are going to start with the initial things, like very simple things, like what is what are solids, what are liquids, and what are gases. Okay, so we are going to start with this. The reason why we have to know all these things is this is going to have some idea about the elements which will make compounds. Okay, so these are all preliminary things that we have to start, that we have to understand initially. Okay, so what are solids? Solids have a definite shape. Okay, so they have definite shape. So a definite shape means they always have uh, a particular they're always close to the, all the particles inside the solids are very close to each other. Okay, you cannot compress them further. further. Okay, so they are already compressed shape. Okay, and they have very strong intermolecular forces. So this is a very important uh, vocabulary here called intermolecular forces, called the IMF. Okay, so it's called intermolecular force IMF. So because the, the force between each and every uh, molecules inside a solid structure is very strong. They are very close to each other. Okay. And since they are very close to each other, they can only vibrate in their own motion. So they can vibrate only in their space that is available. To them. So solids are having a very definite shape and you and volume. Okay. They have shape and volume and they have, uh, they, you cannot compress them. Okay. They are close to each other and they have very strong intermolecular forces. And they can only vibrate. Okay, so they have only vibrational motion. So this is very important compared to solids. But when you come to liquids, when you come to liquids, let me see, take a different color. When you come to liquids, liquids, they can always take a shape of a container. So that we know, very simple thing, right? It can take a shape of a container. And it will have a fixed volume, right? So wherever the volume it has, it has fixed volume. And but they move a little bit far away as easily. Okay, so they have some spaces available. They can move far away. Each molecule can move from a little bit far away from, from each other. So they have two types of motion here. One here in solid, you have only vibration. But here you have both vibration and also translation mode. So translational motion is also available. So basically you the each molecule can vibrate. At the same time they can also move in different directions easily, slightly movable. So that is called uh, liquids. So they can each and every particle can move now. Now the next is the gases. The gases are little more random, right? So the random is random this is called entropy we call in chemistry from solid to liquid liquid to gas the entropy increases so how the entropy is increasing the shape of the container okay it is going to hold on to the shape and volume of the container right so it is this is very similar to the uh, liquid but it's going to fill the entire container it is not going to stay at the certain level it's going to fill the entire space but the molecules can fly far away from each other so that is the, that is the reason it's going to fill the entire container but the beauty about the gases is you can compress them into a small space also, right? So you can compress them into small space also, or you can let it fly into a big space also. So it is compressible. But the other solids and liquids, it's not, it's not compressible, but the gases are compressible. But they have a constant random motion. But constant random motion means they will be moving like in a straight line all the time, like zombies. You know, they just, just move like straight line all the time and try to go and hit on the wall. And then they just come back in straight line and then goes and hits on another wall. That's all. So they have 
Now, three types of motions now. One is each and every molecule can vibrate on its own. It can vibrate on its own. And it can move now, right? And it can also rotate on its own. So, you have vibrational motion, vibrational, translational, and rotational. So, if you look at the, uh, the difference between the solid, liquids, and gases, the intermolecular forces changes between these three phases. And when it changes, the, the beauty is about the motions are different from one. They have one motion, one freedom. It has two types of freedom now. It has now three types of freedom. So that is why the entropy that we call the randomness, the entropy uh, or the randomness is increasing from left to right. Now, we have to understand the second part. You have phase changes that is happening. What are these phase changes? When you look at the phase changes, you have a solid. Let's let's think about solid as so example as water. Solid, and then you have liquid, and then you have gas. A solid can become a liquid. And then a liquid can become a solid. All this based on temperature. So solid can become a liquid, can become a gas. A gas can also become a liquid. A solid can directly become a gas and a gas can directly become a solid. So the processes are different, right? So we know the process are different. When a solid becomes a liquid, we call this process called melting. But when a liquid becomes a solid, we call them freezing. Right? It's called a freezing point, melting point and freezing. But when liquid becomes a gas, we call it boiling. Boiling. But when gas becomes a liquid, we call them condensation. The solid sometimes directly becomes gas. Okay, if you take naphthalene balls, okay, or camphor, okay, it can directly become uh, gas. So that process is called a sublimation. And from gas to solid, it is called as deposition. So the six process is happening inside these three phases. Now you have three phases, right? You have three phases, and you have six uh, processes. So it's three phases and six process happening is based upon both temperature and pressure. When you change temperature and pressure, these changes happen. And when solid to liquid to gas, what is going to, what is happening? So you we, we saw that the the interparticle dif distance, the particle distance is very close by. Okay, right. So but, but the interparticle distance is is far and in gases is very far away. And so the integral particle uh, distance is increasing. And what is happening to the potential energy? The potential energy is also increasing. When you go from solid to liquid to gas, the potential energy also increases in this direction. The temperature, when you increase the temperature, we obviously know the solid will become a liquid and then it will become a gas eventually. And since the motions are also different, we saw that the, the solid has one type of motion, liquid has two types and gas has three types. So that is the reason the kinetic energy, kinetic energy of these particles are also going to increase from solid to liquid gas. So in everything, the gas is very has a lot of potential energy, a lot of kinetic energy, the interparticle distance is reaction. So when when there is so when you compare any reaction, the gaseous reactions are very fast because they can react very right. 
Now, we have to look at on the other side, what is the, uh, to go one more step, we, we covered the solid, liquid and gases. Now we are going to look at what is really the meaning of matter. So if you, if you say matter, the matter can be, one can be, you call them pure matter. The another one you call as mixtures. So pure means you look whatever you see in the periodic table. All the elements are pure. So whatever you see in the periodic table, like hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, all of them. But when you have the other one is called as compound. Like hydrogen, when reacts with oxygen to form water, that is also pure, that is a compound. So the elements are also a pure, only one single unit, single identity. The compound is also pure, but it is made up of two elements. It is made up, made up of both hydrogen and oxygen. Right? Both hydrogen and oxygen combined to form water. So it's a new compound, but it has two elements, but still it's pure. But now when you have mixture, the mixture can be classified as two of them. So one is called as homo and one is called as hec. So we call this homogeneous mixture and heterogeneous mixture. Homo means same, right? Homo means same. Hetero means different. So homo means only homogeneous mixtures means only compounds, right? So you have uh, water is homogeneous, okay? But you have uh, the same type of substances is called homogeneous. One can go into another. It's called homogeneous. Okay. So if you can mix two things and then it becomes only combined to one another, it's called homogeneous. But heterogeneous is two different things that you cannot separate. Right? It's a heterogeneous mixture, like for example, sand and water. A homogeneous mixture can be, if you add salt and water, it can become homogeneous mixture. But it is very difficult to separate salt and water just immediately, right? But, but salt and water can mix. Or sugar and water can mix. That's called homogeneous mixture. But heterogeneous mixture is sand and water. It's very simple that if you add sand to water, it is not going to mix. It's going to settle down. So that's called heterogeneous mixture. One important thing we have to know about elements also, we look at all the periodic table and then we see some of them like special elements, some of the elements form allotropes. The allotropes, like if you take example of carbon, carbon forms two allotropes. One is called graphite, another one is called diamond. Both of them has two different properties, but both of them are carbon. They are pure carbon, pure, but have two different physical properties. And so that is very important. Okay. So even there are several number of elements that exhibit allotropic properties, allotropes, exist as allotropes. So this is very important. So to understand this whole thing, matter can be classified into pure and then as mixtures. Pure means it has to be identified as only as a set on its own. Like for example, pure elements like hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, all the elements you can combine. But compound means elements combined to form compound. But mixtures means you have homogeneous mixture. You mix one of them, it will look the same. But it has two, three components in it. Okay, it might look the same. Okay, you have, you can have a, a single liquid, but it has A, B, C, everything it will look like. So you have a mixture of 
all of them, A plus B plus C, but everything will look like a pure liquid, right? Like just like your uh, um, bath and body soap. It is like, it's like a pure liquid, but it has several things. Okay, so it's a homogeneous mixture. Okay, but they have different properties, right? So when even when water forms, hydrogen, if you look at hydrogen, it's a diatomic molecule. Oxygen is a diatomic molecule. It has, it has its own properties. It has its own physical property. It has its own chemical property. I will come to that, what it is. It has its own properties, same thing, same different physical properties, chemical. But when they combine to form water, now this is a compound. They have totally different physical and chemical. So we should understand that very clearly. Now, how we have to separate, how we are going to separate this, uh, these uh, mixtures if we get these mixtures, right? So if we get a very simple mixture, let's take a heterogeneous mixture. Like, for example, let's take a heterogeneous mixture like water and sand. It's very simple, right? So you take a filter paper and then separate the sand. Separate the sand with the filter paper with filtration. And then you can get the water and the sand. Very simple. So, but if we have water, sand, and salt also added to it. So there are three components to it. Now you have three components. So how we are going to separate this now? How we are going to separate this now? So first we have to separate the sand. The sand can be separated using filtration, as we as we looked earlier. But the water and salt are mixed now. So the water and salt, the salt must be separated only through evaporation. So we have to heat it, by which the water goes away. And then the salt will be seen at the bottom. Right? So the water is going out of evaporation, evaporate the water. Right? And then you will left with salt. So this is how the coffee maker also works, right? So the water drips and then takes whatever it is needed and then gives you the coffee. This is the filtration is one of the simplest method if it is possible. Okay, so the first method to, to separate any thing is to try this, what is called filtration. The second uh, uh, thing we can try is what is called as distillation. Distillation is a process by which if you have several components, let's say you have A, B, C, three or three components. So everything is together in a flask. And you want to separate A, B, C. How will you separate this? A has a boiling point of uh, 200 degrees Celsius. B has a boiling point of 150 degrees Celsius. And C has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. Now you can heat them by which you can set up what is called as a distillation setup. And then you're going to collect first the C, which comes at 100 degrees. And then you remove this and then you put a different flask. And then you will collect B at 150 degrees Celsius. And then you remove that and then you will take another flask which will put A and then you will collect at 200 degrees Celsius. So basically you're going to heat by increments. You're going to heat at 100, followed by 150 and followed by 200. There is another technique called chromatographic technique. Okay, So that we are not going to go over today. It's a little bit complicated before because chromatography is not, an, uh, it is not a separation technique. It's first, it's an identification technique. First, you identify how many components are there. And then you try to separate. It is going to work based upon the differences in the intermolecular forces. Okay, so we are going to go over this later in detail. Okay, I don't want to go over today. Now, further, we are going to look at, as early I told you about the physical and the chemical properties, 
physical and chemical properties. What are the difference between physical and chemical properties? The physical means simply like melting ice is a physical property. Like H2O, liquid becoming H2O gas, uh, sorry, solid becoming liquid is a melting. It's a melting ice is a physical property. If you rip, ripping a paper is a physical property. But chemical property is water. If you separate water into hydrogen and oxygen into individual elements, is it called chemical property? 